nothing like the taste of new mown lettuce. Oh, oh uh, honey, the steaks look terrific. Well, they must have cost you a small fortune. Uh, they're not to eat, Dallas. We uh, rented them just to impress you. Oh. <laughs> you really want to be impressed? A dollar eighty-nine a pound. Mm. Where? Someone came to the door. What was his name? The Avon Meat Lady. Steaks, chops, and eyeliner. <laughs> You mean you bought these steaks from a door-to-door -door salesman, 50 cents a pound cheaper than in the market? Mm-hmm. Oh. I was a little worried if it'd be any good. Mm, that's yeah. terrific. Mm. I wish I could remember his name. Did he say where the meat came from? It comes from a cow, Ted. <laughs> Not necessarily. These days... <laughs> Come on, Ted. I know good beef when I taste it, and this is delicious, juicy, hot beef. Mm. Hot beef. I remember now, Mr. Tenderloin. Hot beef? We're sitting here at your table eating black market beef. What are you Alice. talking about, Ted? Oh, come on, Alice. Bargain beef, door to door, Mr. Tenderloin. So what? You get your hair styled by Mr. Bruno. Yeah, but Mr. Bruno doesn't solicit door to door. Wouldn't it be funny if this were stolen beef from a Russell Gow or something? Oh. I wouldn't be funny. You'd be breaking the law. Oh, come on, Ted. The poor man Sherlock Holmes, with his unerring intuition, can tell from the marbling the fat that it's stolen beef. Come on. Come on, my foot. Look, you should have questioned this tenderloin character. It's our responsibilities as consumers. Well, why do you think the prices are so high? Because the big food corporations are making too much profit and ripping off the little people. Well, I don't necessarily accept that, but even if it were true, you're the guys that are always so big on total honesty. You see, that's what's wrong with the world. Nobody is completely honest. I am. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Mr. Honest oh. Abe Henderson with a mouthful of hot steak. <laughs> Come on, Ted. You never copped a candy bar from a dime store? No, you never did. You never sneaked a look at somebody's test paper. You okay. never did. Insurance. You never patted a claim? Never did. What about finding tax loopholes? Always does. Come on, you're starting to attack me because I'm an honest person. I'm not on trial here. You're the one dealing with rustlers. I'd like to deal with a rustler. Where do I get a hold of one? Mr. Henderson? Yes, but uh, how did you... I think uh... the secretary must have stepped out there for a few minutes. Tenderloin's the name. Cattle's my game. Uh, your uh, mutual friend and mine, Bob Sanders, said you'd get a big kick out of meeting me. Oh, I see. Sanders one lawyer, nothing. Sit down, please, Mr. Tenderloin. Oh, uh, my friends call me T-Bone. Quite frankly, Mr. T-Bone, I'm glad you're here. You see, I think that you are in a let's, very... Let's just cut right through it, Mr. Henderson. You, you think I'm a thief. Oh, no, wait a minute. I didn't say that. Well, you don't have to. I can see it all over your face. No hard feelings, but I didn't come here to do business with somebody who doesn't trust me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait oh, a minute. Listen, it's all right. I mean, I don't need the business. You just explain to Mr. Sanders that it didn't work out, okay? Oh. I think I left uh, yeah, <laughs> Come on. Let's talk about this, huh? Well, now, listen. You're entitled to your opinion. Look, I didn't call you a thief. A man walks into a big city office wearing a cowboy suit and a western hat. I got nothing against your clothes. Well, what is it then? Is, is it my down-home accent? Of course not. <laughs> Don't you please stop accusing me. Listen, let's just lay it right out on the line. I mean, you're a smart man, big city lawyer, and you cannot see how anybody could sell prime Kansas City corn-fed beef at my prices. As a matter of fact... Unless he was some kind of a crook. A con man, or Lord help us all, leave the cattle running. <laughs> I'm old, I'm old, I've been honest with you. Now, don't you be honest with me. Isn't that what you're thinking? Yes, yes, I did think that. All right, then there's no use in us wasting each other's time any further. You have a nice day, yeah? How do you sell prime beef at those prices? Oh, by eliminating the middleman. What middleman? Well, the shipper, the packer, the wholesaler, and the supermarket. Now, that ain't too hard to understand, is it? Yeah, but where, you, where do you get the, uh, the meat, the cows? I'm a cattle man. Now, how do you get them here? Well, I hit them up, move them out. Don't you ever go to the movies? Boy? Well, I guess it sounds logical. I mean, what you're, what you're saying is that you've managed to uh, cut your overhead, huh? No, I ain't what I'm saying at all. What I'm trying to tell you is that I am being squeezed. Now, sit down there. I want to show you something. You got another minute? Come on. You got to look at this. Yeah, take a look at that. Is that your family? Left to right there. That's, that's Billy Ralph, Gene Roy. That's my wife, Laney. JoJo, old Big Carl, <laughs> and Tad Poe and J.D. That's the twins. And, and that little fella on the crutches there. That's the wit. 
uh, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm real proud of it. I tell you, you folks here in Los Angeles County may not realize it, but times are hard. I'm just trying to feed my youngins the best way I know how. I can understand that. I, I have a family myself. I, I'm a level with you. You are not getting something for nothing here. No, sir. I'm making a profit. <laughs> well... Maybe I owe you an apology. No, sir, you don't owe me a thing. No, 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 I want you to understand. You see, I feel that as a consumer, we have responsibility. You bet. Now, I know that nobody gets anything for nothing. Right again. Now, as an attorney, I felt that I had to ask you these questions. Oh, shoot, I respect you for that. Good, just so you understand. Now, let's talk prices. <laughs> Liz, I want you to take that thing. I want you to look it over. Listen, I want you to check me out. Boy, these prices are incredible. Oh, they are then. But I ain't gonna let you buy a thing. Now, what do you think of that? I don't understand. Well, listen, I don't high pressure, folks. No, sir. I want you to take your time. If you ain't satisfied with the deal, I'll stand on my head and flip BBs in my watch pocket. <laughs> you have a nice day, you hear? Oh. I loved it when she thought you were a 34D. Ha! <laughs> I was there to buy a bra, not to have my dreams come true. <laughs> Can I play with my puzzle? Sure, honey. Wasn't that digital watch at Benedict something else? Oh, boy. So was the price tag. Was that salesman really saying that it was a steal at $170? Mm-hmm. I told him if he'd turn his back, I'd steal it for nothing. <laughs> Why don't you just ask Santa Claus? That's what Ted always does. Mommy, Lizzie says anybody who believes in Santa Claus is dumb. <laughs> How do you like that? I've got a daughter who doesn't believe in Santa Claus and a husband who does. <laughs> That figures. Anybody who believes he's totally honest is entitled to believe in Santa Claus. Come on, Carol. I have lived with Ted for 15 years now, and I can tell you. One, he has never knowingly stolen anything. Two, he has never reneged on a promise. And three, he has never put the toilet seat down in the bathroom when he's finished. <laughs> This book is 12 years overdue at the public library. Oh, come on. Now, that's not dishonesty. He just forgot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Plaza Hotel? I did that. Comes with a matching set of towels. You're going to turn me in? <laughs> I wasn't, but Ted might. Oh, come on. Alice, the sad thing is that everybody steals. You steal ashtrays, Ted finds tax loopholes, and Benedict rips you off by charging three times what that's worth. But, Carol, that is not stealing. Oh, no? If you took the 90, that would be stealing. Right. But if they overcharge you, that's called business. Boy, you're always trying to buck the system, aren't you? That is the system. What would have happened if I had slipped that digital watch into my purse? Benedict's would have put in a claim, the insurance company would have paid off and still made a profit, and I'd have the watch. But that's, that's, that's wrong. Of course it's wrong. The whole system is wrong. That's why we have to change it. Okay. All right, you convinced me. Let's go rip off the watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ted, where's your key? Grab the dog. Oh, what is this? Steaks. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Alice, there is a Santa Claus. You bought a steak? Yeah, well, Carol was right. They were a steal. Going! Excuse me, ma'am. Howdy, Miss Carol. Who was that masked man? Tended loins and aim, cattle from a game. Had to make your acquaintance, ma'am. Don't believe it. Where, where am I going to put all this? Ted? Yes. Ted, what on earth did you buy? Uh, porterhouses, sirloins, uh, liver, eye of brown. But, but I thought you said that... Yeah, the... I tried to stop him. That made sense, Alice. He's just a cattleman with a big family who's being squeezed, so he eliminated the millman. I checked him out. Shake me out. He run me through the ringer. He asked me the most probing series of questions I have ever heard. I uh, hope I wasn't too rough on you, T-Bone. Oh, no. You got to expect that with a sharp city lawyer. I'll tell you, you got one smart husband now. He saw right off to get the best deal. You've got to buy in volume. It looks like you bought the whole cow. Oh, he would have. But I don't know how to hide it left. <laughs> Oh, no, ma'am. I'll be seeing you later on tonight. I gotta go out and rustle up the rest. You go round them up, D-Bone. So long, beef feller. Ted, will you listen to me? You were right. The guy's a crook. I just saw it on the evening news. Agents from the Bureau of Rains Protection are looking for the guy. I'm surprised at you, Kitty. I really am. What did you hear? <laughs> Russells are selling black market beef in the Los Angeles area. Well, maybe they are, but uh, he's not one of them. I mean, he's a family man. He left me his business card. Now, would a rustler do that? Are the steaks okay? Carol, 
Carol, they're perfectly legal. I mean, are they done yet? Almost. Are you sure? They've been grilling for ten minutes. No, I mean, are you sure they're legal? Because Carol has just been saying that that man... But would you please? All of a sudden, everybody's an expert. I told you I checked the man out. If it makes you feel any better, I'll check him out again. Here he comes with the rest of my cow. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I got the rest of your order here. Mr. Sanders, howdy. Howdy. Uh, T-Bone, Mr. Sanders would like me to ask you a few more questions. Ask him if he saw the 6 o'clock news. Did you uh, see the 6 o'clock news? No, I'm afraid I missed it. Something good on? Tell him he missed his picture. Bob, would you let me ask the question, sure. please? What? That's what I've been trying to tell you. My picture was on the television? Two poses, huh. full front and profile. Well, there's the system for you. Trial by television, trial in the newspapers, slander, rumors, innuendos from a bunch of F.B. intellectual snobs. <laughs> if that's the way they feel about people of this around here, I'm, this town seemed to last to me. Let's wait a minute. How, can you, how do you get to San Diego Freeway? <laughs> Come on. Alice, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you, I want to talk to. Now, let's be cool about this. I got half a cow in my house, and you're telling me to be cool. Are you crazy? That meat is stolen. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to call the police. Where's the telephone? Where it's always been, Ted. Don't be funny, Alice. <laughs> Ted, can I ask you a question? No. Why not? Because you set me up with Jesse James in the first place. <laughs> set you up? Ted, how much did you pay for that beef? $298. Don't make that call. That's a terrific deal. There is nothing that you can say that will stop me from making this call. If you call the police, you're going to be out $298. Okay, what have you got to say? You didn't know the meat was stolen when you bought it, did you? No, of course not. And you gave the guy the third degree, right? Sure, I told you so. Then what's dishonest about keeping it? I don't know, but there must be something. You're not going to call the police. Well, come on, I'll help you get in the freezer. Starting to thaw. <laughs> talk about honesty, you're not going to return the meat. Return it to whom, Alice? Have you seen anything in, a, in the lost and found column about half a missing cow? I'll tell you what, the next time I see half a cow walking down the street, I'll paste it back on. You're compromising, Ted. Alice, I never compromise. Tell that to the public library. Yes? A Mr. Masterson would like to see you. I don't know any Mr. Masterson. Does he have an appointment? No. But he's got a badge. Well, you better send him in. <laughs> My name is Masterson. How do you do? I'm, uh... I know who you are. <laughs> Special Agent, Bureau of Range Protection? That's right. If you wish, you uh, are entitled to have a lawyer present. I am a lawyer. Oh, fine. Well, that takes care of that. Uh, if you'll uh, just fill out these forms and sign them in triplicate, uh, then I can get on with the interview. What are these forms? Well, don't worry about it. They're just, uh, they're not uh, admissions of guilt. They're just depositions. Depositions verifying your uh, participation in legal activity. What are you talking about? Uh, look, uh, Mr. Harriman, things are going Henderson. To... You're right. Uh, Mr. Henderson... <laughs> Things are going to go along a lot smoother if you don't insist on asking a lot of irrelevant questions. I mean, I've got nine other suspects that I have to interview this afternoon. Look, I am not uh, signing anything or saying anything until you tell me what this is all about. Well, now, look, do you deny having dealings with a person calling himself Mr. Tenderloin, also known as Sam Sirloin, Freddie Fillet, and T-Bone Harris? <laughs> <laughs> the names they use... <laughs> I, uh, I'm not denying anything. <laughs> Fine, then just check box A. I'm not admitting anything either. That's box B. And I'm not checking anything. Refusal to check box E. <laughs> Look, uh, Masterson, I know no legal basis for you to come into my office invading my privacy and making unfounded accusations like this. Uh, excuse me, I, I didn't quite get that. <laughs> oh, no. Would you please leave my office? Yes. Your wife on line one, Mr. Henderson. She just wants to know if it's all right to have steak for dinner. Chicken, Alice, chicken! Come on, Mr. Henderson. Don't you realize that we're trying to catch these people? It's apparently respectable citizens like you, people who are willing to bend the law, that make my job impossible. Look, I think you better leave my office, Masterson. You're respectable citizens who have fancy offices like this. You think us public servants have posh offices like this? Oh, no. They got seven of us stuck in a stinking little cubicle with walls that don't even go all the way to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, well, you tell Stinky, Sneezy, Dopey, and Doc that uh, Snow White said hello and goodbye. 
Now, look, Mr. Mitzi, you're making a mistake. I'm about to make another mistake. What box do I check for ripping up forms? <laughs> That's a whole other form. Mail it. is in a Michigan State sweatshirt coming at you. It's not called a move. It's called fear. Hi, guys. Hi, guy. Who's oh. this? Tuna? With all the beef in the freezer? Now that you heard, since we bought that side of beef, we've become vegetarians. <laughs> you haven't eaten any of it? That's another one of his moves, also called fear. Uh, hey, that Masterson guy really got to you, didn't he? Why do you say that? Because you're refusing to eat the evidence. <laughs> He didn't get to me because I didn't do anything wrong. And I find it awfully strange for you to be accusing me. Who's accusing? I say you got nothing to worry about. Oh, yes, we do. I can't get another thing in the freezer. <laughs> Hello? Ca Carol? Yeah, just, 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 no, Bob. She doesn't want to talk to you. She wants to talk to her lawyer. Hurry up, honey. She says she's only got one phone call. <laughs> Carol? What? 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 All right, all right, relax. Don't sign anything and don't say anything. I'll be right over. What? What? Carol's been arrested for shoplifting. <laughs> Everything they say about the cops is true. Unbelievable. How could anybody accuse you of shoplifting? Because she had one of their watches in her purse, that's why. The digital watch? You stole the digital watch and you're blaming it on the police? Plead insanity, Ted. <laughs> Sean took it. Sean, well, why didn't you tell them that? I did, about 20 times. Come on, Carol, be reasonable. You know, there are shoplifters who use their own kids. Okay, now let's just settle down. It's all over. Oh, suspecting an innocent child of stealing a watch. What happened, honey? I stole the watch. <laughs> but you didn't know you were stealing. Yes, I did. Sean, why did you do that? Mommy wanted the watch. Sean! You told Aunt Alice that everybody steals. Honey, when I said that to Aunt Alice, I didn't mean that it was right to steal. What did you mean, Mommy? Yes, what did you mean, Mommy? Yes, explain to him how the system works, Mommy. <laughs> I was wrong, honey. Sean, come here, buddy. Now, look, it is wrong to steal, no matter who does it. If you do it, or if Mommy does it, or even if a big store does it. Now, do you understand that? Yeah. That's right, explain the system to a six-year-old. Want a steak sandwich? You understand that stealing is wrong. Yes, Mommy. Okay, okay all done. I guess we better give this back. What? I told it for you, Aunt Alice. Isn't that sweet? Two contraband sirloins, four black market fillets, and three Russell t bones We've come a long way, haven't we, Henderson? We haven't come any place, Masterson. I didn't know the meat was stolen when I bought it. I simply don't want black market beef in my house. Who are all these people? I, I'm Mrs. Henderson, and this is Mr. and Mrs. Sanders. He's the one that sent uh, tenderloin over to see me. Stool pigeon. <laughs> Did you buy a side of beef, too? Uh, no, just uh, six steaks. Ate them all. They were delicious. <laughs> Consuming government property, huh? <laughs> you just fill out these forms. <laughs> and it's for you. I'll send somebody over to pick up the rest of the meat later. Where are you going with that? Evidence. Don't I uh, get a receipt or something? All of a sudden, you become a signer, huh? Don't you realize I'm trying to do you a favor, keeping your name out of all of this? Don't you get the message? 555-2960. Hey, well, what, uh, what's going on here? I'm doing you a favor. I'm keeping your name out of this. Uh, you just hold this. Hello? Holy Cross Orphanage? Uh, sister, this is Ted Henderson. I have a contribution to make. Uh, about 350 pounds of prime beef. Have you got a freezer? Oh, fine. We'll bring it right over. Yeah, you're welcome, sister. Bye. Oh, you blow it, Henderson. There's nothing I can do for you now. Yes, there is. You can give me back my meat. 
I told you this is evidence. Yes, against you, and my witnesses are Mr. and Mrs. Robert Sanders. But that's a pretty clever trick, isn't it? Uh -huh. Accusing the accuser, suggesting that a dedicated public servant with a, an unblemished record of over 20 years... Don't worry, Mrs. Finney. I'm sure we can keep your name out of this. I'll just take these sirloins as evidence. <laughs> that, that, that was totally out of context. Uh -huh. At that particular point in time, I, I was merely following orders. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you people don't seem to understand how our system works. <laughs> That's all right, I'm leaving. Uh, uh, Terrific, Alice. Mm -hmm. Almost as good as Mr. Tenderloin's finest. They are Mr. Tenderloin's finest. What? I thought we gave them all to the orphanage. I'm sorry, Ted. I made a mistake. There were some left in the refrigerator freezer. I didn't know they were there. Well, I'm not going to eat this. Yes, you are, Ted. You're going to eat it, and you're going to enjoy it. You know why? Why? Because it costs you $75 a pound. Oh, well. <laughs> Now, stay tuned as America's Funny Men do their hilarious best on Make Me Laugh. Next on USA, it's a great place to stay.